where they both have their appetite again. And then anybody that wants to share food, the owls are planning to do that, but it, I know there are other people that want to do that as well. So th we'll make that uh, information available to you. Elaine will go tomorrow, I believe, to have a court set and then start her chemotherapy on Thursday. And it's, uh, she's, her, just has a great attitude. I, I think uh, Pam Colot's been a wonderful influence on her, but please keep both of them in your prayers as well. Janet Townsend fell about two weeks ago, and they sent her in for an MRI, and while they were checking to see what was going on, they found a mass behind one of her eyes. And you may or may not know, she's blind in one eye. So this has her extremely concerned that she might lose the sight in her only good eye. She's going to pay you on Tuesday. So also, Janet needs to be in your prayers. The monthly Bible study will meet Wednesday the 9th at 3 and at 6.30, and we're discussing chapters 8 and 9. The book is, if Christians were really Christian, you don't need to have the book. If you want to just come in and sit in on the discussion, it's very open, and it, whatever comes up, we take off and discuss that. So it's, it's a real interesting group of people that we really get, dig into some things, and sometimes we get a little silly too, but oh yeah, I'm there, so of course. <laughs> and let's see, what else? Long Range Planning will meet Thursday the 10th at 6 p.m. to discuss ideas and activities for the growth of the church. Anything else? Any other? Marissa must have an announcement. We're having a VBS meeting Wednesday at 6. VBS Wednesday at 6. If you haven't been to the basement, <coughs> you need to go check out the basement. Marissa and Matt. We have pictures if you don't want to go down the steps. <laughs> Marissa and, and Matt have been working like crazy. We've got a lot of junk out of down there. Let's say our, our dumpster is full. And then Kelly Burnett was here like, all day one day this week painting. So we, we're making progress, but it, it's a big job. Tim, did you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to pretend you have to be Karen Garman. Oh, Karen Garman. Last I heard, and Julie's not here. Last I heard was that she has pneumonia. Uh, if there's been an update, anybody know? I, I don't know any further on that, so add her as well to your list. Um, I, I, Karen's waiting at me. Two things. Cards for Elaine. Yes. We, one of the things we did when um, Karen Pam and Tracy were first uh, diagnosed with their cancers and moving into their chemotherapy. We brought cards in and left them with Bonnie, addressed to the girls, and then she put them all in a box. And as they went through their treatments, they would open a card every treatment day or every day or whatever. And we'd like to do the same thing for Elaine. So just, you don't need a stamp. Just bring it in with Elaine's name on it and share it with Bonnie. She'll put it in the box for her to have as a, a way to feel your love while she's going through this. And Karen has another one. The other thing is, Marsha's big birthday is Thursday. Mm -hmm. my, my big birthday. Yeah, one of those that ends with the same day. Birthday. birthday. She just impressed me. Turn on the birthday. Thirty. Yeah. Thirty. It's a new day. Yeah. 35 twice. <laughs> Diana. Um, last week I asked for prayers for my uncle and for my friend Terry. Both of them are receiving hospice care now, so please keep their families, our family, in your prayers. And just this week, um, one of my students um, passed away. Um, he didn't sit for a while, but you know he can't recall. Heaven has the most beautiful smile now. So I like prayers. And I'm sure we all live together. We have many on our prayer list, and there's one thing that we all believe in, and that is the power of prayer. And I, I trust that all of you will lift up these names and these families. 
and each other because we know how, how much it means to us. Matt, did you have something? Yeah, my uh, prayers for my mom and like all her siblings. My grandpa came home. I was on hospice since Monday. I was told one to three days, but he's still with us. So he's, I mean, should probably be we're expecting probably today. Yeah. So it's a prayer for Absolutely. I thank you all for the prayers that you share with each other and the, share, the prayers that I have felt personally. So keep that up. I know that it means a lot to people. People that don't even attend feel our prayers when we share them with them. That, are there any other announcements? Any other concerns? Any joys? Any joys? I woke up this morning. <laughs> Nikki woke up this morning, and we are very glad. Tyler had his uh, orchestral concert with the middle school and high school kids in Parsons last week. So his time of student teaching is starting to wind down, and I think he's glad. I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> I graduated like less than 70 days, and there's like 15,000 things that have to happen. <laughs> I am here in the moment. That's all. And we're glad. Yeah. Are we ready for another song? Uh, let's go. We're going to sing some more. Excuse me. I will. Well, she told me what to sing. Okay. Please join me in our affirmation of faith. I believe that Jesus is my Christ, the Son of the living God, and I confess him as Lord and Savior in my life.
first chance to make sure that this is on. You can hear me, I guess, if you went to the real thing I'm texting for you. These prayers of the people are as much yours as they are mine. We've already heard of a number of prayer requests, but we also know that uh, there are requests in our hearts uh, that haven't been announced, they're not printed, I might not say them out loud. So in this time of prayer, there will be some pauses for you to remind yourself and to lift up those who are on your heart. Let us join our hearts all together in prayer. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the world, for the welfare of Christ's church around the world, and for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray for Pastor Dustin. For those who lead this congregation, let us pray for the community of Pittsburgh and for the people of Kiev. For those in power, our government, our president, the president of Ukraine, for the leaders of the world in control of armies and weapons in Europe and the world over. Let us pray for those who are discouraged. And for those who are ill. We pray for their families, and for doctors and nurses who provide their care and recuperation. We ask God's power that they would be made whole. Pray for those who face the hour of death. We pray for those who mourn. We pray for the good earth which God has given us. for the vigor of the spring that approaches. We pray for the vigor of our spirits throughout this season of Lent. Let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let's turn our attention to the reading of the Holy Word. The Gospel reading for this first Sunday in Lent comes from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Jesus 
full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command His angels concerning you to protect you, and all their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The temptations of food, of power, of protection, were tests of the Spirit of Jesus. We listen to this story near the beginning of our 40 days of Lent so that we will know what we are up against. This test story from the Bible travels throughout world literature. The devil appeared to Homer Simpson in Moe's Tavern in an episode of The Simpsons. Homer, I will give you an endless supply of donuts and beer and pork chops. <laughs> if you will give me your soul. Homer was about to say, and then, hmm, hey, what's the catch here? Good boy, Homer. The world has changed dramatically since Dustin phoned me a couple of weeks ago to ask me to fill in today, the world situation reveals today's lectionary reading to be about something more than the temptation of chocolate and giving up a favorite food or drink for Lent. Three temptations, food, power, protection. Homer is spot on to say, wait a minute, what's the catch? After 40 days of fasting in the wilderness, the adversary suggested to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, turn this stone into bread. Famished and vulnerable, 
Jesus answered, One does not live by bread alone. But wait! Stone into bread? What's the catch? Why not make bread out of rocks? Why not make lemonade out of lemons? Why not do everything we can to provide access to nutritious food for all God's children? My empathy for the people of Ukraine grew when I recently learned that Ukraine is the breadbasket of Europe and they too have a fondness for sunflowers. Yet my Kansas neighbors by another name are now refugees who walked or ran away from their kitchens and gardens and markets because they have been invaded by an army that takes out military bases and kindergartens. Mr. One Does Not Live by Breath Alone is not celebrating the forced fast of war. I don't think Jesus is teaching us that bread is bad. He wasn't scolding us for having hunger. So what is the catch? Turning stone into bread. Devoting all your energy to your stomach hunger. Stealing the loaf of, a, of bread from a Ukrainian child to feed a Russian economy. There's the catch. When we live by bread alone, when we devote all our attention and energy to the alchemy of stone into bread, when we open up that offer for the new credit card and its promise of freedom to become permanently indebted to a small monthly payment. Yeah, there's a, there's a catch. Our devotion to consumption kills our humanity. We do not live by bread alone. We live by our imagination. Not an imagination to turn stone into bread, but that human imagination to turn injustice and violence and war into gardens, paintings, poems. When we give up on turning everything into a loaf of bread to satisfy our stomach hunger, then we are free to act upon our hunger for a world in which all children are saved from grinding poverty, and in which all parents are free to raise their children instead of becoming further enslaved to the minimum wage job and bread factory. Don't settle, says Jesus, for a full stomach when a full life is on offer. So after getting a no deal on the stone bread scheme, the, de the devil showed that Jesus a panoramic view of all the kingdoms of the world and offered them to Jesus. I know it sounds a little far-fetched, I mean, after all, what is an itinerant rabbi going to do with all the power and glory of these kingdoms? The military parades, the financial clout, the knees bent in patriotic devotion. Worship me, says the devil, and I'll transfer all of this into your Swiss banking account. Power is 
like hunger. Hunger in itself is not good or bad. It comes down to whether we become slaves to our stomach hunger. Power in itself is not good or bad. It depends on whether we use it to lord it over people or to lift people up. When we seek power for the sake of power instead of the power to lift others up, power will eventually destroy. When we seek the power to lord it over our kids, our spouses, our workmates, when we seek the power to lord it over our church, our city, or anywhere else that power has power, when I alone seek magic power over others, I become powerless to lift them up. Right now, the power to lift others up is getting celebrated around the world. Putinet is exercising power, but he has elevated Volodymyr Zelensky to world's favorite president. Zelensky originally gained popularity as Believe it or not, a television personality. He ran for president of Ukraine almost as a gag and won the election. And then faced the buzz saw of corruption and low expectations of television star from his very own people. That was until Putin unleashed the intoxicating power of a world-class war machine. Zelensky was expected to cave like a TV star or a corrupted leader who would take the money and run. Instead, Zelensky stands in the trenches, in the subways, with his people. There you have it. What's the catch to power? Who? Zero. Zelensky. Why? Who? Zero. Zelensky. He. And we can hope that every world leader and every servant of the living God sees that score and sees the immense suffering of this terrible beginning. Don't settle for world domination, says Jesus, when loving God and serving others is on offer. Three temptations, food, power, and protection. The devil offered a circus act of jumping from a high place to be rescued by God's angels. And Jesus humbly refused the get-out-of-gravity-free card and stood on the solid ground that humans live as test takers, not test givers. Simply put, God is God and we are not. Tests are tests. And in Jesus' own words that we just recited a bit ago in the, in the Lord's Prayer, we can be Asking God to deliver us from the evil of tests. The 
we cannot put God to the test. We cannot prove that God loves us by jumping off the highest cliff. We can't put God to the test because God has already been proven by love. This story contains the phrase 40 days in the wilderness, which is why we have been given this season of Lent. 40 days of penance, 40 days of preparation for Holy Week and Resurrection Day. This one who answers the devil, do not put the Lord, your God, to the test. Will himself be tested by betrayal, arrest, torture, and the Roman political prisoner's death by crucifixion. We do not put God to the test, yet we know how the story goes. We know that love is constantly tested. And for, our, for throughout this season of Lent, may we remain in constant prayer and preparedness for the tests of love that come to us, the tests of love that surrounds, knowing that even when push comes to shove, love wins. Get ready to sing our song of invitation if there is anyone desiring to unite with the life of this congregation. I just ask you to come forward and be received.
able to receive the gifts that have already been arranged for us, not just by the leaders of this congregation, but the gift that has been arranged for us in the life, in the death, and the resurrection of Jesus himself are freely open to us. As we are in solidarity with so many around the world at this time who are refugees from all manner of war and oppression, would also remind you that uh, the Week of Compassion, which we have just recently received the annual offering, has already been on the ground working with agencies for the people of Ukraine who are arriving in Poland and other places seeking safe harbor. Gifts that we have been given may also be shared. Let us remember that it was on the night when he was betrayed that Jesus took up a loaf of bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and blessing it, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for many for the remission of sins. Let us give thanks. God of mercy, we ask your blessing on this bread and upon this cup that as we receive them in our hands in our mouths in our stomachs and in our lives that they would fuel us for the work of your love we ask that in this time of uncertainty chaos and questions about the future, that you would use these gifts in our lives to make it clear to the world that you are love, that you reign over death and bring life. We ask and hope these things in the name of the one you sent to us to bring us to you. Amen. <clears throat> Communion elements are at the table. I think you all know better than I do as the guest how this works. My sense is I probably did something out of order. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. <laughs>
utilize throughout this season of Lent as a gift to love, as a sign to others of God's care for this world. In the confidence of that love, let us now go in peace.